Maggie. Hello, everyone. Wow. It has been a hot minute since I have talked in front of a camera or even said anything to you guys. So, hello, what's up? How is everyone? <laughs> it's a little bit a month since I posted my last video and it's been even longer than that since I filmed one. So, wow, this feels new and fresh and crazy. I'm in a new spot today. I mean, this is still my bedroom, but I'm just filming in a different position than I usually do. So, hey, what's up? I asked you guys on Instagram, like, what kind of video you wanted to see, and everyone was pretty much just like a life update, wedding planning update, what's going on in your life update. So, here we are. And there were a lot of requests to meet my new little pup, little Mickey. So, he is here. Hi, baby. He is in a little bit of a grumpy mood because mama is not here. Is she? No. He's literally the tiniest pup you've ever seen in your whole life. And he's so sweet and we love him. Yes, we do, don't we? Mm. He is a toy poodle. He's a little black toy poodle. And for those of you that didn't know, um, the day that I left from my college program, my dog, Eddie, he was a miniature poodle, black poodle, and they look really similar. Um, we had to put him down for some medical reasons. Eddie was a rescue dog, and my whole family is very allergic to animals, except for me, weirdly enough. So we have to have a hypoallergenic dog if we have a dog, and we all think it's really important to adopt animals rather than buy them, so it just doesn't really, that's the only reason we ever got Eddie was because he was a hypoallergenic dog that we could um, a dog and he just kind of happened into our hands and the same thing happened with little Mickey His name was Mickey before we got him. We did not name him Mickey. So he was just Destined to be with us. Um, he's so cute. He has a, a couple of brain issues which makes his kind of Development or something I guess a little slow and he has some anxiety issues, but he's so sweet. He's the cutest thing um and he likes to do this weird thing where he like stares off. I think he can see something. Like I think his eyes see things that ours don't. Hopefully it's not ghosts. Hopefully there's just something going on with him. Hey buddy. Um, but he's just the funnest, cutest little pup. He loves to play outside. He's so fun. So we're big fans of Mickey, aren't we? Yeah, he's getting a little shaky right now. So Mickey is not mine and Jack's dog. I know a lot of people were confused about that. Um, it is not mine and Jack's dog. This is my parents' dog, but since I'm at home, right now um, until the wedding. Um, he is my little brother. He's nine months old, he's so cute, and we're obsessed with him so much. You're so precious. But um, he kind of does this like moaning thing. It's not always because he's like upset or sad, it's like just kind of how he communicates. So he doesn't like being trapped on a bed and I'm filming a video so I don't want him running around the house by himself because he might poop somewhere. So <laughs> if you hear him moaning, <laughs> I might have to take a break and pause and work with him but we love him and we're so happy he's here and I'm happy the YouTube family got to meet you too. Sorry for my annoying puppy voice. So I'm just gonna get into a lot of the questions that you all asked me. I had you all ask me questions on Instagram just kind of updating on my life and what's going on, wedding planning, all that jazz. So I figured we just kind of get right into it. This is my first Q&A or several times I was like I'm gonna film the Q&A and I never ever did. So you're finally getting a Q&A. <laughs> okay Let's do it. Okay, so our first question, I'm just like, I screenshotted all of them, so I'm just gonna kind of read random ones. Um, how hard was the transition going from DCP life back to living a non-DCP life? Honestly, I thought the transition was quite a bit easier <laughs> than a lot of people have had. I think mine was easier because I was like, so ready to go home, it wasn't like, I was like forced to leave because my program ended. Like I even chose to leave my program early. So, <laughs> hey buddy. So it was like a really easy transition for me because I was more than ready to be home. Buddy, I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you want to get down? Maybe that'll help you. You're just gonna go straight to the door and then moan at the door. I know it. Yep. 
so yeah the transition was not hard for me but I know that for some people it really is and completely understandably so yeah um okay when is the wedding yay our wedding is September 21st 2019 and right now it feels so far away I've already been engaged for almost six months so, and that's like sometimes a normal engagement time for some people. So I'm just more than ready for it to be here and it's feeling longer and longer away. Longer and longer away? Further and further away, I guess. And it just feels like the distance is getting longer, but we're slowly chipping away at the months and I'm very excited. But yeah, September 21st, 2019. Are you making any plans to go back to Disney soon? Um, actually no, I don't think so. Um. My whole family kind of like wants to take a break from like just vacationing to Disney and just like go and do something fun. Um, because vacation was like, or Disney was the only place we vacationed when I was little. So that's like what we spent our money on. Like we didn't go vacation anywhere else, even though it was like immensely cheaper. It was just like my family, my parents would save up all the money we possibly could to go to Disney. Like <laughs> he's playing in the light. <laughs> um we would save up all the money possible to go to disney and people are just kind of ready to try something different especially since i lived there and they visited so much um that it's i don't know it they got to do it quite often and i don't know so we're just kind of ready to do something different i think we're going to plan a big fun spring break trip just to somewhere that is new and fun for all of us so yeah we're excited okay so that was a whole big thing my dad walked in and then literally mickey peed on my floor so <laughs> had to get that settled with sorry if it looks totally different but that's why i feel like the sunlight is kind of weird but i don't know okay so what are we talking about oh no, so not really planning to go back to Disney anytime soon, though I do miss my roommates down there a lot and want to visit them literally every second. So, yeah, it kind of stinks that I don't get to. But, um, I do think I'm going to visit Marley soon, which is fun. Um, I have New Year's Eve Eve plans with Marley. <laughs> my family does like a big New Year's Eve party every year, so I'll be back in Kentucky for that, but I think I'm going to drive up to Indianapolis to visit her that weekend so super excited for that um what is your dream job <laughs> I have no clue not a clue I don't really know maybe work in a museum I'm one of those people that's like I've never really had a dream of what I wanted to do and so it's like kind of frustrating because I see people who like I want to be a doctor and so then they plan their whole life around being a doctor and it's really simple and it's an easy process well not like an easy process to get there obviously it's a ton of work but it's like they just know what they want to do their whole life that kind of structure freaks me out but I've always kind of admired the fact that people have like a goal in their head and then they work towards it where it's like I literally have no clue what I want to do so I just kind of figure it out on the fly which is how I operate with everything and I like that but I don't even know so it's like people literally ask me okay if you could do anything in the world like what is your absolute dream job I literally have no clue I don't know what I would want to do no idea but something in an artistic field so it would either be just like being a potter like that would be my job I'm not like good enough just to do that I just like enjoy it and I think it's fun obviously if I work more towards it I'll get better yeah so I, I really I really don't know I'm not sure did you participate in musical theater in high school yes I literally did that was my whole entire life my whole life not just high school it was my entire life I did my first play when I was eight years old and from the time I was eight until I graduated high school like I was constantly in a show like there wasn't like a time that I wasn't in a show so it's weird because like a lot of my college friends like don't know me as like theater Sarah Beth which was like my entire identity all growing up and in school Mickey hey buddy hi you just get some water you thirsty okay um but yeah I, if I can find some I'll put some pictures in like right here 
of me doing theater in high school. I was in a play every year. I was Belle in Beauty and the Beast, which was one of my favorite ones. And then I was a scarecrow in The Wizard of Oz my senior year, which I absolutely adored. The scarecrow was such a fun role. It was because up until that point, I had pretty much always done like, oh, the nice, like, dainty girl character who sings and la 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 and so my senior year like I really did not want to be Dorothy I want to do something fun I want to do something character acting and so getting to be the scarecrow was so much fun I did Dracula I was Lucy in Dracula my freshman year in high school I was Lucy in Your Good Man Charlie Brown so two Lucy's um Dracula what else was there um I did Emily in Our Town. So there was a lot of things. Literally theater was my whole entire life growing up. And I, I miss doing it so much. Um, fun fact, I almost went to school for to pursue acting. I was accepted into a program at um, CCM, which is the University of Cincinnati. And it's their College of Music, which is like their theater department as well. I was accepted there based off an audition for um, Governor's School for the Arts, which is like an arts thing in Kentucky that you do in high school. And I did an audition there and got acceptance into their program, but I ended up not going because I decided that theater wasn't what I wanted to do for my whole life. I just wanted to do it for fun. So yeah, but it's like my whole entire life was theater and I don't do it anymore that often. And so it's really fun for me when I get to. Last summer, before Disney, I was Sandy in Greece, and it was so much fun. That was just awesome. But yeah, so that's fun. What details of the wedding do you and Jack have planned out so far? Uh -huh. It's so fun. Um, wedding planning is like, like I don't think I can explain to you all how much of a non-planner, non-organized type personality I am. Like I am very much like go with the flow, do things as it happens like if you have a 20 page paper to write that's due in four months like i do it three months and 30 days later and do it all in one night and i just work better under pressure i just do not think structurally or like very well ahead of time i'm like very much not my personality so um wedding planning has been like kind of difficult for me because I'm just not structured, I'm not organized, and so keeping all of those things together is like, it's like a test for me. But that is one thing that I think has been good about my job. It like really tests me in that area and has made me grow a lot in like being organized and structured. And so I think that's like rubbing off on wedding planning a little bit. Um, but we actually have quite a bit done right now. So that's really cool. So we have our venue, our photographer, which if you all follow me on Instagram, you've seen some of our engagement photos. I'm in love with them. Um, our photographer's name is Faith Kane, and she was a senior at my college when I was a freshman, and we were in the same sorority. She's like, was such a huge role model. For, blah, blah, blah. She was such a huge role model. Why can't I say role model? Blah, blah, blah. She was such a role model for me, and just like very much like a spiritual influence that I looked up to. She was just so sweet and so wonderful and just really wise so I really adored her um, and so it's been so fun after she graduated college she got into wedding photography and she's just amazing so I was so happy to have her just this week we've been like cranking out some stuff this week um, we booked um, our food and so what's fun is that our entire um, wedding is outside <laughs> everything is outside um, so I'm kind of nervous about that because if it rains and we're just kind of toast and don't have that many options. Hi, Betty. So hopefully it doesn't rain. <laughs> Y'all be praying for no rain <laughs> for me. It's all outside. So if we do a caterer, we don't really have like a ton of opportunity for them to like really cook food or anything. Like there's a house on property, but you have to like kind of drive to it a little bit but I'm super excited because we're doing a food truck for our food at our reception um, and we just booked with them I'm super excited it's called we're doing pizza which is gonna be so fun so it's called rolling oven pizza and their truck is like an old shipping container sort of type thing like those big things you see on the back of semi trucks they did that and like revamped it and made it into like a little pizza stove and 
oven. It's an oven, not a stove. There we go. Um, and so they just kind of like make it all there. So that's going to be super fun. Um, so we're doing like a food truck, which is going to be awesome. And then um, I just this week also got in contact with the florist um, because florals are like not something I'm willing to pay a lot of money for because they will literally die the next day. So I'm not wasting like $3,000 on florals. It's just not happening. Um, so I needed cheap and affordable. Um, and also I wanted locally grown, like sustainable flowers, like from Kentucky, from someone who like grew their own flowers. I just think that's really important to like, I don't know, definitely support small businesses when you can. I think that's super awesome and very important. Um, but especially if I could get like locally grown sustainable flowers from here, especially if someone grows them on their own. Um, and I was able to find someone. So I'm super excited and she's really affordable. She's so nice. And so I've been talking with her this week. So hopefully everything works out there. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of the big things knocked out and then everything else is just going to kind of be like smaller detailed kind of things. Um, but I'm so excited. It's going to be so fun. It's just going to be like a big chill. We're literally getting married in the middle of the woods and it's just going to be nice and relaxing and just a chill time for everyone. Hopefully it just doesn't rain. <laughs> That's my biggest fear at the moment. So from now until September 21st, I'll be praying to the Lord for no rain. Ooh, I'll insert a picture of my wedding colors so you can see them here. Maybe. Um, I'm doing earth tone colors, so everything's just going to be very natural, very just, I don't know, organic, I think is just kind of like the word that I'm inspired by. Everything's just very organic. I don't want anything to feel fancy or, I don't know, too done up. I just want it to feel organic and natural and very true to the space that we're going to be. So super excited about that. Um, yeah, so those are some things that we have figured out. What? How's the new job going? Very well. I enjoy my job a lot. Um, I will be finished with my job in May, so um, I'm just about six months in. Uh, the end of November will be six months that I've been there. So it's wonderful. I couldn't ask for a better, like, first real, real big girl job. <laughs> All my, um, the rest of the staff there, my coworkers, they're amazing. Including me, there's only four of us that work there. So it's really small. They're all great and lovely. And I've learned a lot about myself. And I've learned a lot about just what it looks like to be in kind of an administrative position. And how much work goes into it. So it's it's been super wonderful. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really thankful for it. It's been, it's been a good experience for sure. Do you have a wedding theme? So I kind of talked about that. Not a theme. Um, I know I made a joke on my Instagram about The Princess Bride because that's my favorite movie of all time. I can quote the whole thing forwards and backwards. Like, I love that movie. And the pictures that we took just, like, made, like really made me feel like Buttercup and I was feeling it. And so I made a joke on my Instagram that was like, I think I'm going to theme my whole wedding The Princess Bride. And everyone was like, really? Like, you totally should. Or like, my friend did that or something like that. I would never actually do a themed wedding like that, but... I was just very inspired in the moment. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I kind of talked about that. Just very organic, very earthy, natural to the space kind of feel. Yeah. Oh, and we're going to have like a big bonfire. Like the place there, they do bonfires with all their weddings. So we're going to have like s'mores. And it's so it's literally just going to feel like a fall fun party in the woods, you know? It's just going to be very, very fun. Mickey! Hold on, let me get him. <laughs> Here, eat your little, eat your little thing. Come on. <laughs> he gets really upset when my mom's not home. <laughs> so we don't really have honeymoon plans laid out for sure. We've been kind of talking about just wanting to do something small, like right after our wedding, just like going somewhere nearby, like maybe like to Tennessee, just in the mountains or something, or I'm kind of attached to going someplace warm. Um, and just like not doing anything and just like laying neither Jack nor I are beach people like I'm horrified of the ocean and I think he just gets kind of bored sitting on the beach not doing much um and so we didn't really want to do anything like tropical but then like the more a lot of my friends have gotten married recently 
and like the more and more I see people like in Cancun and places like that like it makes me more convinced that I want to do something warm for my um like directly after our honeymoon um so I don't know so we've talked about maybe like going to California and just doing like a little week or something um but we're not totally sure um the reason we kind of want to do something small is because so we get married in September of next year that next spring so like oh. April or May ish <laughs> This is not him like growling out of anger. This is like he just gets like kind of stressed and this is how he communicates that he's like oh just like not feeling something and it's usually when mom is gone and he just gets a little upset because he loves her. Um but we're gonna take a big trip to Europe. Um because Jack will um after we get married, so we're getting married in the fall. The next fall is when Jack will start actually attending grad school. He'll be applying all before then. So we'll have our whole first year of marriage, we will just be working. Like we won't, he won't be in grad school. We won't be doing anything else like that. We'll just be working. Um, and so we're like using that time to like take advantage of it and do a big trip because we know once he gets into school, like it's not going to be, he's not going to have the freedom to kind of do that whenever. So we're going to take a big trip to Europe. Um, and so we want to like save up money like specifically for the Europe trip and not like <laughs> just blow a bunch of it on like two kind of honeymoons because that just seems silly. So we want to do something kind of smaller but we're not totally sure on what we're going to do yet. So, but sorry he's being so crazy. Come here buddy. He just likes to sit on the edge of my bed. Like I'm afraid he's going to jump off. Sorry that literally took so long to explain. Hopefully I'll cut it out and edit it so that it doesn't actually take that long, but my dog is distracting me. How are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> this has been a crazy month or so, and YouTube hasn't even been on my mind to even think about, um, but I'm doing great. I'm happy. I'm more than content with where my life is at right now. I'm overjoyed, but it's just been a big month. A lot of things have happened, and a lot of time I just needed to focus on myself and not focus on YouTube so it's been good um, very refreshing do you have your wedding dress yet do you have pictures of it no I do not have my wedding dress yet I'm like <laughs> I'm like one of those people I change my mind about things every second and I'm like so indecisive so I'm horrified that if I buy my dress like so far ahead in advance that when I like open it on my wedding day, I'm gonna be like, I hate this. Like, I don't want it. <laughs> so I haven't gone wedding dress shopping yet. Wedding dresses are just really expensive. Weddings themselves are so stupid expensive. Like 15 times I've been like, Jack, should we just not do this elope and like not even have a wedding day? <laughs> like, cause it's so expensive and I'm like the cheapest person ever. So it really stresses me out and I get really overwhelmed by how much money is being spent. <laughs> you can definitely find like cheap wedding dresses or like, rent them or have them from people who have worn them before who are selling them whatever like you can make them affordable and and I want to like try them on in store just because I want to have the experience of like having everyone get together and like go do it all together and just get to play in a wedding dress and have fun um but I think maybe what I might end up doing um there's online stores that you can literally like pick out the dress and then have them like custom build it for your body so like you send in all the measurements you send in everything and they custom build it for you and then send it to you and you get it like you know like three months later or whatever and they're so much cheaper it's insane like you can do that I mean and obviously it's like they're gonna add up depending on what kind of dress you want I am very relaxed my whole wedding is like kind of very bohemian very natural very just chilled out like it's just a chill wedding and so my style is just very simple very kind of chill so that works in my favor price rise price rise price range wise um but i can literally find a dress online for like 600 bucks like compared to like trying them on in store and then like getting upcharged because it's like a boutique price and then paying like fifteen hundred dollars for a dress which I know is even like cheap for most people like most people would spend that much money on their wedding dress I just will not I refuse <laughs> I'm not spending that much money on it 
Um, so no, I don't have my dress yet and I don't know when I'm gonna get it, but we'll see. What is your daily makeup routine? Uh, not a lot. I get questions about my makeup all the time. And I think it's because like, I literally don't do makeup. Like I do not know how to do it. I like, there's some YouTubers that I like that also happen to be makeup artist people. So I have like watched a lot of makeup, but I don't know how to do it by any means. I like just recently started wearing highlighter and you can like kind of see it popping in here and I'm living for it just a little bit. But I don't know anything about makeup. I refuse to pay a ton of money for makeup and I don't know. And I, I guess I could do a video with you guys, but literally like my makeup takes maybe 10 minutes in the morning maybe 10 minutes that's like if I like put a lot of effort into it but I usually like literally I do like a little bit of a primer just because I feel like that helps my skin and just like not like sink into my face so much I lay down foundation and then I do concealer um and I do have shape tape um only because my under eye bags are probably the things that I'm like most like aware of on my face it's like I want to cover that up <laughs> um just because they I mean I've had dark circles my entire life it's not like oh I'm getting older or I just like don't get enough sleep it's like I just have genetic really dark under eye circles so you can't really do anything about them um which is fine it's not like the end of the world but that is one thing I I will buy shape tape and it's like $28 per tube and it's ridiculous and it's so stupid expensive but it lasts for a long time because I don't really use that much of it because um, it's like so thick. You can just like put like two little dabs and then blend it in and it's like you're good to go. So I will buy that. Um, and but like I started using that in Orlando because Marley is like a makeup lover. Like she loves makeup. She's really into it. And she was using shape tape and I was like, oh my gosh, like this covers up my dark circles and you cannot see them. Um, so I started buying it there, so it's still relatively new to me. Um, and I've only bought two containers of it. And I was in Orlando for a long time and I was, have been home for quite a bit of time now too. I'll do like a powder sort of type thing. I don't do like a, I just do like a little compact like pressed powder sort of type deal with a brush. Just put it on my face, whatever. And then I do blush. Started doing highlighter now. Um, and then usually I just put like a little bit of like a creamy kind of like skin tone eyeshadow on um, my lids just so it doesn't get like sticky like foundation-y or whatever. Um, and then I put on mascara and very rarely do I even put on eyeliner anymore. I'm just like very not into makeup. So that's pretty much all I do. But yeah, I could, but I get, I get asked about it all the time. Um, so yeah, I don't know. That's pretty much all I do. <laughs> Disney anything, life after Disney. Um, I don't know. I just feel like I have a unique experience that's like not totally normal to everyone else's experience after the DCP. So I feel weird talking about it because I feel like most people don't relate to it. Like I was done with school. I didn't, ha I didn't like go back to school. I didn't go back to anything that was familiar. Fam Why can I not talk today? I didn't go back to anything that was familiar to me before. So it all felt new. It all felt different. And I didn't really struggle with like post DCP depression. So I don't know. Cause like literally I got home and a month later I got engaged and started this like whole new job and this whole new life phase. So I don't know, I feel like my experience post DCP is not super relatable for a lot of people um, because I adjusted really well and it was super easy for me because there was a lot of really exciting things going on in my life um, where I know that it would be definitely very different for people who were going back to school or anything like that. Um, but there are a lot of DCP people and YouTubers who go back to school, I think would have a lot better advice for you. I kind of like generally push them in other people's direction because I don't feel like mine is like a super normal way of handling things because not everyone is done with school and graduated and then goes and gets engaged a month after. So 
I don't know. It was a really easy transition for me, but that is like totally just me. I know a lot of people have a really hard time with it. She said, I will watch anything because I love you. I love you too, Shelby. And it is, someone just wrote biggest, or DCP regrets and things you wish you would have known. Biggest DCP regret is never meeting Miss Shelby. <laughs> Honestly, I'm obsessed with Shelby and I just want to be her real life friend so bad. <laughs> it's like the worst situation of being like social media friends and never ever getting a chance to meet each other in real life. <laughs> it's so frustrating. I just want to hang out with she and Madeline and be friends, but we haven't. It's fine. Do you have, oh, this is from Emily. So um, this, uh, Emily has a channel and she was an ICP and she like just left her program. So she's like not there anymore, but she made vlogs constantly the whole time. And she's really, she's really sweet and just really fun. Um, and her accent is incredible to listen to. So um, Emily's Wonderland, it's like Wander, like W-A-N-D-E-R, Wonderland. Um, Emily's Wonderland, she's so sweet. Um, she said, do you have an ultimate goal for your YouTube? Love your chatty sit down videos most. Um, I literally don't have any plans for my YouTube. I have no clue what I want to do or what I want it to look like. I have no clue. Um, I just very much so like enjoy having little parts of my life documented, but I also know that life gets really crazy and it's super hard to be consistent and I never want it to feel like something I have to do and like I don't know, like I don't like being controlled in that way. Hold on, my mom's calling. Love ya. Bye. I never wanted to get to that point where it feels like a job and it's like something that I have to do, but I also feel like if I didn't have a job and I was like only doing YouTube with like doing art on the side, I would like really enjoy it and love making videos all the time. So I don't know. I have absolutely no clue what I want my life to look like or what I want to do with my future or with my YouTube, so. That's me. What are you most, oh, this is from Bailey. Hi, girl. What are you most excited for for your wedding? I think, and it sounds kind of cheesy, but like, I think I'm just so ready to, like, honestly, just like have Jack be my husband and like that be it, you know? Like, I mean, we've just been in relationship with each other for so long. And like literally have talked about being married to each other since we were like juniors in high school. And it's just funny because it's like we have so much history with each other and like can vividly remember having conversations about us getting married. At the time it seemed like so far away and like even so silly because we were in high school and we didn't know what was going to happen. But there was always just like this real genuine connection between Jack and I. Even though it was like stupid and in high school and we did like... We didn't have like the most healthy relationship and we were very dependent on each other and like obsessed with each other, honestly. Um, there was still just like this very real genuine nature to it and always just kind of felt like it was gonna happen and I never fell out of love with him and I'm, just, I'm like head over heels, I'm more in love with him than I've ever been today than I have been. Um, and so I think it, I'm just excited for it to like be finally happening for us and it just be what my life looks like I don't know like I'm just I'm excited for that and like just to have him be my person like he's there and yeah I'm excited that's not necessarily like what I'm excited for about the wedding um but I guess just about like getting married that's like I'm just really happy that it's him and I'm excited that that's just where our life is heading in that us like little dweebs 10 years ago like as stupid and immature and silly as we were like really just loved each other and it hasn't gone away and we've been through a lot of crap and we've worked through a lot of stuff and like, it's just the most genuine real true connection and friendship that I've ever had with anyone in my life and so for that to be like turning into just the person that I get to do the rest of my life with and the person that's there for me and my rock that I depend on. Like, I don't know, I'm just excited for that to be Jack and I'm excited for that to get to that point that's like we've looked forward to it for so long and yeah, I'm excited. I love him a whole bunch. What is 20 times 29? Who sent in a math question? I 
<laughs> I couldn't tell you a math question. <laughs> no clue. Don't know what that is. What do you miss most about working at Walt Disney World and what do you miss least? I... I don't know. I think what I would say I miss most, probably just like getting to play in the parks with my friends. I think that was always just like a super fun thing that we all got to do together. And there will never be another point in my life where I felt like as comfortable and just like chilled out about going to the parks as I did then. What I miss most now is just like literally being able to like pop to Magic Kingdom. Well, just kidding. We never popped to Magic Kingdom. If you can't pop to Magic Kingdom, it's a trek to get in there. I loved having those moments where it was like one, like me and like one other person were off and we were like, hey, like let's literally just go to Animal Kingdom to ride Dinosaur and Everest, let's make fast passes and then we leave and come back home and eat food. Like, I don't know, it was like, there's like such a spontaneity about living there that's really fun and I think that's like the non real life aspect of it. Um, it's just kind of like the spontaneity and being able to do whatever and just kind of be crazy while you're there, which is probably what I miss most about working there and living there. Um, what I miss the least, probably just like being away from my family and being away from Jack. I just, I thought I was okay with it for a long time and then like realized that I wasn't <laughs> at all and I wasn't handling it well. <laughs> um, and then just kind of like the, well, I didn't realize how detrimentally horrible the pay was until I started making a salary <laughs> and realized, oh wow, like this is why people don't live here in Disney all the time because you get paid trash money for working really, really, really hard. Um, so yeah, definitely don't miss that. Don't miss having like literally $7 in my bank account at the end of two weeks because you had to pay rent that was way too expensive and you had to eat food that was way too expensive and you had to buy groceries. Um, yeah, I like, I do not miss seeing $31 on my bank account and being like, oh God, I literally can't do anything for the next week. It's just nice. And I love being able to save money. Wow. Like definitely probably miss least the amount of money that you get paid there because it's not good. It's not good friends. Uh, wedding first dance song. Um, so our first dance song is going to be Dream a Little Dream of Me by Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong. Um, that is just kind of like a me and Jack song. It has been for a long time. And then that was a song he was playing um, during the proposal when we got engaged. Um, he played that song when I was walking in. I was like, what are you doing? Like, what is going on? I was so confused. Um, so we played that there. So that's just a song that's always like just held a lot of meaning and like specialness to us. So that's gonna be our first dance song, which I'm super excited about. <laughs> Shelby also said, when is Lightly Sarah Beth finally going to meet Miss Shelby? Lovely question. Please send help, hopefully soon. <laughs> you're driving me bonkers. You really are. But you're so tiny and cute, I can't help it. Do you see yourself living in Danville forever? How about Kentucky? Um, so I don't see myself living in Danville for forever. Um, next year, after we get married, Jack and I will probably move to Lexington, which is like a bigger city um, that's about 45 minutes, an hour away. Um, so we'll probably live there because that's where Jack works. He drives there every day. Um, so we'll definitely live closer to Lexington. Um, and I don't think I could be far away from Kentucky for forever. Um, I definitely, I've lived away from Kentucky and I just don't love it. <laughs> um, I'm a huge fan of Kentucky. It has like my whole entire heart. I just love it. So um, I wouldn't be opposed to like going and trying someplace new um, for a little bit of time. But I think I have to come back to Kentucky and like this is where I kind of want my roots to be laid. Um, especially when it comes to like raising a family and stuff like that. Like I want to be near my family and near Jack's family and I don't want that to be something we do on our own. Like I want to have that help there. <laughs> You're so cute. What's been the hardest thing about engagement? I think, I think the thing I guess it has like surprised me the most about engagement 
is genuinely how different it feels to be engaged than it does feel to just be dating. I just kind of assumed that like engagement was just like dating 2.0, you know? <laughs> um, but there's this automatic like legitimacy that comes after engagement that's like, whoa, okay, like you're gonna be, ignore him, he's being petty. <laughs> Looking at this person and you're like, whoa like even though if you would have known that your whole life like i've been in love with jack basically he's the only person i've ever been in love with like i he has my whole freaking heart and even looking at him like before we were engaged fine looking at him before we were engaged like i knew that we were gonna marry each other but there's like this real like oh shoot that comes after you get engaged and like it feels just more legit and it feels more real um which i wasn't expecting i wasn't expecting it to feel different but it definitely does um and then the closer and closer we get to marriage it's just like ah like this is my person this is the person i'm doing my life with this is the person i'm gonna see every morning when i wake up this is the person who i'm gonna see every morning when i go or every night when i go to sleep like it's just crazy like when you start seeing that as like the person you're really depending on for the rest of your life like i don't know it's cool it like legitimizes you as a couple a lot and i wasn't really expecting to feel that i thought it was just going to kind of be the same but then what comes along with that hard stuff is that this is literally the person you're doing the rest of your life with so there's just a lot of like truth and vulnerability that has to happen in the engagement period that i mean it's tough it's you work through a lot of things and you depend on each other for a lot of things and you have to be very vulnerable and very open and just transparent and it's hard but it's just a good process to work through things together and grow in things together and push each other further to Christ because you can't depend on each other because <laughs> um, we will fail each other that's just what relationships look like um, but luckily jack has been so loving to me and has been so encouraging to me and just pursuing me in a really sweet way that makes engagement very sweet and very fun and refreshing for the both of us even after it's been kind of tough and you work through a bunch of stuff but i'm so thankful for it and i love this period of engagement mm, 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 mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> Mickey. Okay, my camera's dying. But um we get a lot of questions. I think that's enough. <laughs> this video is gonna be so long to edit already. I'm just excited to have another video up for you guys. So I love you guys the absolute most. Mickey, even though he's being a turd, loves you guys too. And yeah thank you all for sending in messages and it's just been fun to kind of answer some questions for you guys um so hopefully i'll have this video up relatively soon and i'll have some more videos hopefully coming <laughs> later um it just gets kind of overwhelming but i want to have that for you all but that's it for today thank you all so much i hope you enjoyed this video just like another random video from me um i had fun filming it and i missed you guys thank you all Love you all the absolute most, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye! <laughs>